Sir, this is Omaha calling. Last time we spoke, Emmanuel, you said something great that was instantly quotable. You said, one and done at the Mohegan Sun. Are you still feeling that way right now after this long delay? Absolutely. I stand by my words, and I'm going to stand by my performance. So you're going to tune in on Thursday night on CBS, and you're going to see Daniel Weitzer will be done in one inside the Mohegan Sun. We heard from Daniel earlier on the call, and he said that he felt he had evolved, you had evolved, but he had evolved more as a fighter. What would you say to that? I disagree. I still see the, you know, going back to the selection show prior, and I'm glad that he won, and that's who I wanted uh, when I saw him fight uh, Saul Rogers. Uh, you know, in his mind, you know, he might believe that he evolved, which is a good thing, and I'm sure throughout this whole months and downtime of everything that's been going on in the world he's been focused and ready and determined and everything but i still saw the same daniel that i remember from uh, 2016 and i saw that in his second title fight as well too with patricio so i knew i was ready for either one of those guys back at that moment as well too and would have wanted either one of them and now uh you know i chose and i'm on the toughest side of the bracket here i'm on the same side of the bracket as two guys who have a win over me so I picked the toughest fight, and I'm looking to, to write the best story. All right, one more thing for me, Emmanuel, and I'll let you go. With this performance, you know, you're looking to go five rounds, possibly if it goes the distance because it's the featherweight tournament. Have you been able to train for five rounds with the pandemic and everything that's been going on? Absolutely. And uh, I'm ready to the death, but uh, I'm ready. and We won't need them, so I know that, and the judges won't be needed. But... Uh, everyone knows that I'm a, I'm a cardio freak. I was born for this. I was made for this, and I can go to the death and until I got no more lungs. So, but I, I'm ready and I'm hungry and determined and focused. So it's time. All right, sir. Good luck on Thursday. Looking forward to the fight. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, we'll go to Matthew Parman. Hey, what's up, Emmanuel? How are you doing today? What's up, Matthew Putterman? How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Hey, I just want to ask you, you know, you're one of the few combat sport athletes that isn't afraid to show their faith that they have in God. You know, you, I see a lot on your Instagram as well, too. You're posting a lot. What, what has God done for you in your life, and why would you like to portray yourself with that, too? I wouldn't say necessarily that it's just portraying myself as that. It's uh, all who I am and all who you know I choose to be is all because – the glory to God that I'm here for this moment and this time. And I'm uh, just very fortunate and very blessed. And I, I, I'll be honest, I, you know, I don't deserve it, but I'm grateful for everything that God has done for me and put me in this position and on this platform to write my story for his glory and be able to share that with the world as well too. So I know how much I've been blessed with this and I'm in the position to help bless others as well too. And I have that through martial arts. And for that, I'm very grateful. Definitely. My last question is for you. What have th these months that you've had off, what have you evolved the most in your game? Like what, is there any aspect you've evolved the most or just all around? Uh, my spirit and my psyche. Uh, more than anything, I know obviously uh, growing up as, as a man and mature and coming into really what I thought back then was the best me, but now in my prime, and now just having turned uh, 30 years old, now I know I'm uh, at that full capacity and close to the full capacity, at least, uh, of hitting that peak of being able to use my mind as well as my body. And obviously I've needed the losses, I've needed the injuries, I've needed the, the wins and bad weight cuts and all those types of experiences to put me into this position. To, to go out and shine my, my brightest. Dan Yanofsky. Hey, Emmanuel, how are you doing today? Great, my friend, how are you? Not bad. I, I noticed that both of you haven't really fought in more than a year, and especially with this pandemic going on. Do you think that the time off, especially now that you're giving to work on yourself, do you think it benefits you in any way just because of how you've been training? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, throughout this whole time, uh, it, it was rough. It was rough, and but I never lost hope. So I never lost hope. Uh, very grateful for the opportunity to, to be able to make this happen. Of course, uh, a lot of people wish they could be there in attendance and see it. I, I wish that as well, too. 
but more than anything, I'm just uh, grateful that we're back and able to make this happen for not obviously not just myself, but all the other fighters as well too, knowing that they, they want to go out and shine and be able to provide for themselves because that's what, you know, what we're able to do this for too. So I, uh, throughout this whole quarantine and downtime, lockdown, everything was able to grow in my game, in my mind, in my spirit, and I'm ready to go out and show that on Thursday. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Donna? Hey, Emmanuel. How's it going? Great, my friend. How are you? Not too bad. Now, this fight was going to happen. It was the very first thing to be cancelled during this pandemic. The weigh-ins were done. You were there. It was on. It was off. There was going to be fans. There was going to be no fans. You have had, and because of the way this tournament works, you have had your sights on Daniel Weichel for, like you've, like the last guy said, you've been out over a year. You've had your sights set on Daniel Weichel almost the entire time. How do you feel towards this man now? Uh, the same. Uh, like I said, I just stayed hopeful and was praying for, for him, for myself, for everyone else, and for the opportunity to be able to do this. Um, this was such a crazy thing that happened in the world and very unfortunate and confusing. And on, during these unprecedented times, we didn't know what to expect uh, of what was going to happen or what could happen. But uh, I just stay positive and uh, I'm a strong man of God. So I just stay praying for everyone in the moment. And I'm glad that we uh, were finally here and we're able to make it happen. Uh, throughout that whole time, I just knew, okay, with even a, you know, a, a year long layoff, uh, we got to go through hell to get to heaven, right? So, I mean, the, the more we got to wait, that in suffering builds character and with patience goes perseverance. And now... It just makes that moment much sweeter when I get the victory and I feel this. So, Perhaps the answer is obvious. I don't know, but I'll ask it anyway. What's the difference between, uh, you know, 2016 when you guys were last uh, in the cage together and now? I'd have to say all the training that went into that, my, my nutrition. So not even just of how I'd make the weight and weight cutting. And my, my nutrition, that was a big thing. A lot of other people ask me too, what's uh, so different about my game and, that's my uh, significant other, Stacy Blythe, and through our um, uh, parallel greatness company that we have built up, being able to help uh, my other teammates as well to make championship weight no problem and be able to perform at our best. So for me, it was not, uh, I would say, lack of skill, more so uh, being able to put that into my game was like a supplement to, to my game to help in, enhance and fuel my body to... Uh, to, to perform at its best potential. And uh, I believe I've showed that a lot in uh, my most recent fights and the growth and experiences. And I'm thankful for the, the victories, but also even in the losses as well too, that's what's helped me grow as a fighter and as a man. So I've used that going into my training and each and every single one of those fights as well too. And now I'm excited to go out there and show that again on Thursday night. All right, we'll take one from Rick. Um, hola, señor um, Sánchez. ¿Cómo está? Todo bien, hermano. ¿Cómo estás? Muy bien. ¿Está bien hablarte um, dos preguntas en español? Sí, sí. Dame, dame. Está bien. Ah. Échalas. Um, una pregunta. Allá en México la gente está llamando a ti la, la campeona la gente. <laughs> están mirando a ti. Uh, tú eres la final, los cuatro peleadores. ¿Qué es esto ahorita en tu mente? Uh, tú eres la... Están llamando a ti la campeón de la, la gente. Pues el campeón de la gente es algo que me da mucha alegría y uh, motivación porque quiero inspirar y ayudar a mi gente y otros peleadores también que están en México porque ha quedado en contacto con muchos de Querétaro, de Guadalajara, de Durango, de Ciudad de México y me han dicho que pues es difícil en estos tiempos, ¿verdad? Y pues uh, estoy orando para, para ellos también. Y yo sé que ellos uh, van a llegar a ese nivel también con, pues, del Ultimate Fire o en Bellator o otras uh, ligas uh, bien grandes y, pues, que ellos bien, uh, pueden uh, conseguir esos sueños también y llegar donde yo estoy. Y, pues, sí, quiero ser el campeón de la gente y el próximo campeón mexicano del Bellator. Y esta es la, la última pregunta. Um, 
ahorita um, están haciendo es la mil, um, ¿qué vas a hacer con, if tú ganaste esta pelea, ¿qué vas a hacer con los mil, um, uno millón dólares? <risa> ah, pues ayudar a mi gente, a toda la gente mexicana y otra, pues, gente sobre el mundo, porque yo lo veo como una bendición de Dios y como Él me ha bendecido pues, bastante, y yo siento que yo no lo merezco, entonces quiero a, ayudar a toda la gente también en las artes marciales, en mi fe, en las escuelas y en todo eso. Entonces yo me voy a quedar humilde y pues es algo que es bien grande y pues sí, es mucha motivación, pero obvia, ayudar a, a mi familia, pero también a mi gente. So I was asked that what would I do with a million? And of course, everyone asked me to go all out. But uh, God has, uh, you know, blessed me with this moment and this opportunity to be on this platform. And I feel so undeserving of it. But knowing that I've been able to receive all this, then it is better to give than to receive. So I know I would be able to go and help people in mixed martial arts people who, uh, you know, in children's hospitals, people and who are in losing their faith, people who are in dealing with ailments. So that's what I plan to do with this, uh, obviously the grand prize money of the million and obviously do uh, great things for my family and other people who have helped me as well too and be an intelligent businessman. Great, Simon. Hey, Emmanuel, I have uh, this one for you here. You're, you're fighting with your opponent again, but you got to talk to me. What does the word the matador mean to you? Like, why would you pick that, that nickname? Oh, I got that nickname from my coach, Duke Rufus. Oh, that flies back all the way to 2014 before I uh, made my Bellator debut. And I was starting on the rise with him. Uh, fighting locally in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I didn't have a nickname then. I just was sticking to my, you know, my strong name of Emmanuel Sanchez. And uh, it came from the earliest boxers in my day that uh, he really wanted me to emulate and fight like Jorge Linares, Oscar De La Hoya, Canelo Alvarez. And now you see that in Ryan Garcia and some of the slickest, smoothest boxers. And likewise in, in Muay Thai as well, too. And as they say, the bull is stronger, but the matador is smarter. So even the, the greatest, Muhammad Ali, went out and said that. And I believe that I live up to that moniker. So obviously, in through uh, you know the country of Spain, and uh, it's uh, the bullfighter. But in, in Mexico, there would see like uh, they have it something different. It'd be the killer. But for me, it's, uh, it's someone who goes out there, and you, uh, I know someone's going to go out there and try to take my head off and want to kill me. But float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, and the hands can't hit what the eyes can't see. So I'm going to be like a ghost in there and uh, don't get hit. You can't touch this. You know what I'm saying? Like Rick James. But I know I want to fight like one of the toughest, come forward, grittiest fighters, but be also one of the slickest fighters in this era and in this time. All right. Well, that's all I have for you today. Sorry about that. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, bro. We'll move on to Jay Anderson. Hey, thanks very much. And uh, Emmanuel, just a quick one. Uh, you mentioned being on the uh, toughest side of the bracket, and it's hard to argue with uh, the champ being there. And of course, you do have history with him. Are you kind of pulling for him to defend the title Thursday so you can avenge that loss? And how do you see that fight going? Oh, you already know. That's that's the story I'm trying to write. So you're taking the, the words and thoughts right out of my head and my mouth. But yeah, uh, when you when you do look at the bracket, and how old all the brackets set up, going back to that selection show, I chose the toughest side of the bracket. And oh, I didn't anticipate the champion being on the same side as me, but I picked the toughest fight, a guy who already has a win over me and Daniel Baicho. And with the champion being on my side as well too, uh, there's two guys who have a win over me. So I, absolutely, I'm pulling for the champion. And I would want him to win because I want that victory back as well too. Going, looking back on all this, Obviously, it wasn't meant for me to beat Daniel Baichel in Kansas back in 2016. It wasn't meant for me to defeat Patricio Pitbull in Israel in 2018. But now here we are, and uh, there's a lot more on the line, too, with the stakes and the platform that we're on. So this is something that I'm really looking to write, a, a, a great legendary story and the man who went and avenged his losses and went out to win this featherweight Grand Prix. All right, best of luck on Thursday. Thank you very much. All right, we'll take one or two more here. Santiago. Hi, Emmanuel. Greetings from Amsterdam. 
Is Duke Rufus going to be in your, is Duke Rufus going to be in your corner for this fight? Absolutely. I got my coach uh, with me all week right here. He's a very busy man. We got another teammate next week that unfortunately he's not being able to go for for uh, the next week's Bellator uh, card, but he'll be in uh, my teammate Paul uh, Paul Felder's card this weekend as well too. But after mine, so we're just taking care of business left and right. We had all that downtime with uh you know having locked down and everything that was going on in the world but now with all these fights picking back up he's uh being a very busy hungry man and that's you know uh that's our leader leading from the front so he's uh dedicated committed focused to and hungry to win so he instills that in us too and we're just gonna go out there and you know grind together we shine together you beat Taiwan Klexen in a very convincing way by triangle choke. That was your second triangle choke in Bellator. Do you feel comfortable on your back? Oh, absolutely. You know, triangles everywhere. So I'm all about the pizzas. So that's uh, how I live that life. I can put people to sleep on the ground or on my feet. And that's my moniker from right there. Whether it's with my hands on uh, my legs or whether it's with striking or submissions. Either way, um, I, I look to finish the fight everywhere. I, I'm a finisher. And that's something that I really aspire and instill in myself to go out there and go do. And I just believe in my mindset and believe in my greatness. And I know what I'm capable of. And I'm happy that I'm able to showcase all those skills now. And I think being able to fight off your back is something that a lot of MMA fighters uh, throughout the whole world, not just in my division or uh, whatever sad organization, but a lot of people and fighters, male or female, need to have in their game because you can always obviously win from your back too, not just with the submissions, but also uh, Nico Price, great guy as well too. You can finish a lot of people from the bottom as well too. Doing damage from the bottom makes you a much more dangerous fighter. So I know I believe in keeping myself humble that I'm a complete fighter and I can fight everywhere. And I'm just as dangerous as I am on bottom as I am on top. All right, thank you very much, Emmanuel.